Fitz is alive. Fitz, you're alive. Fitz is alive, yeah. He is alive. I have risen. I'm not feeling too bad now. My quad is healing up very well. I feel grand now. I don't feel anywhere near as I did bad as I did last week. What's the plan? What's going to happen now? What's going on? I'll probably take another week or so without training. And think? then probably get back to some... Sorry, a week or so without any activity. And then probably get back to some walking around the place. Maybe some very light jiu-jitsu morning sessions. Because they... There, there's almost no heavy rolling, um, and then I'll see about some some light little running. Just to see how many people die when they've rabbed them. Mm -hmm. If you get admitted to ICU with rabbed them, you have a one in five chance of dying. ICU, surely at, at ICU level, you're pretty. It's already intensive care, like. That's what I mean. But if you if you have rabbed them, if you get rabbed them, you're so bad you need to go to the ICU. Yeah. You have one in five chance of dying. That's mad. You could have died. I could have died. Yeah. Would I? That I'd be only so lucky. Wouldn't be answering these emails, your lovely people's emails, if I had died. It's definitely the worst feeling I've ever had. Oh. Yeah. Worse than red velvet cake disorder. Worse than red velvet cake disorder. Worse than Lyme's disease. Worse than staff. Staff gets pretty gnarly. Right. But it's worse than staff because you've heart palpitations. Oh, do you? It's very heart attacky. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. What? What did it feel like? What did it feel like? It feels like your kidneys are rotting. Hmm. Like there's actual pain in your kidneys, which is strange. Usually when you're sick, you don't have pain somewhere. Mm -hmm. You just feel bad. And then very much, very kind of, and very sweaty, very sweat, all the time sweat. Um, the pissing is just outlandish as well. Pissing every half an hour, 24 hours a day. At any point, were you ever concerned? Like, were you ever like, oh, I, this is like, oh dear, I need to do something yeah. with this? Yeah, I was. Definitely on the Tuesday night. Yeah. The Monday night, I was pretty concerned as well. Things get bad when the lights go off. At night time, yeah. You get way sicker. Mm. So I was definitely concerned then, yeah. I should have gone to any. Absolutely. So the doctor told you to not bother going to any. It was too late by the time you got to her. By Wednesday, she did a urine sample and a blood test. To be fair, they got the blood test back in like a few hours mm -hmm. um, and my levels were high, but judging by my symptomology, my blood levels were already, or my uh, creatinine levels were already coming back down, you know, mm -hmm. and my creatine kinase levels are already coming back down. So at that point, it's like fluids and then just track it and get more bloods done and make sure they continue to come down. Uh, so... What do you think, how far is the setback you're running, do you think? Strength is probably not too bad, although the quad obviously is a, a big player in that. Yeah, I don't think, I think it would be the same as, I think it's the same as going on holidays for two weeks, mm -hmm. plus 20% extra mm -hmm. for some damage or whatever. I don't think that, I don't think physiologically my kidneys are massively damage to the point where I won't get I think this is just like a little holiday but you're losing mitochondria in yourself by the second yeah and that's why I'm just replacing all those mitochondria with massive amounts of weird drugs that I buy on the internet I thought you were going to say massive amount of <laughs> masteron <laughs> so you finished the squat block so at least you kind of had a nice end at something there yes so you're kind of to be honest at the moment I have no gra for really hard training sessions yeah, you just want to recover. At the moment, I'm like, I never want to train hard again due to the death factor. So that's where it is at the moment. So that's where we're on a little holiday and get those kidneys back online. But you'll have to train again, you know that? You'll have to. Maybe I'll never train again. No, that's not allowed here. Uh, that might just be what happens. Maybe I'll start a, an online woodworking and homesteading channel and just never exercise again. Have you thought about doing high rocks? Oh! <laughs> no, but Dara is joking, and you, you, you will be training again. I might never, I might never touch a barbell again. You're contractually obliged to be training for something as part of Seeker Strength, as one of the directors of Seeker Strength. The sorry, no phone to the office, please. <laughs> so there you have it. Fitz is still alive. Uh, it's a lot of you were very concerned, uh, which for. I don't, know, I don't know why you were so concerned about him, but uh, apparently you were. But he's alive, so it's, you know, 
That's how it be, is it me? Okay, so snatch is finished. So missed 130 and I don't really feel any kind of way about it. I am very happy with the technique. So maintained the technique on the way up. So as I say, I was not, not feeling great, but I wasn't gonna get super hyped for anything. So hit 125 and happy with back position, good extension. So I was leaning back a little bit too much on the first pull and then the extension on the way up and it got a bit better at the 110 and then good at 120 so i was focusing on a really straight extension and pulling the traps vertically and extending vertically and not leaning back but also staying in front of the barbell during the first pull and obviously numero uno was maintenance of my back position so i'm pretty happy with that 125 is nice they're very efficient but we don't want to be efficient snatching we want to be bullying 125 so uh, overall productive if I felt fresher and more energy and I missed 130 like that I would go back down and go back up again but missing 130 like that ugh, I could make it it would be disgusting it'd rattle my shoulders and elbows so there's a minimal point in making that I need good mates not barely making them not at 130 not now it's not that's it's not what we're here for we don't don't be scraping for that so pretty happy technical wise uh, freshness for that the snatching it's not a fatigue issue in terms of global fatigue it's not like I'm fatigued from cutting weight or the other training it's snatch specific because I'd feel it in my jiu-jitsu I'd feel it in my running I'd feel it in my squats but it's it's snatching and if you're like oh do you know what's that and the, the answer is it's weightlifting lads that's it's weightlifting that's what this is this is weightlifting <laughs> this is this is weightlifting that's why weightlifters are like oh is it the hardest sport and no it's not but if you do weightlifting you'd sure think about that but i'm very happy with it so we're looking for a technical progression over everything right now 
So, we're gonna move on to my pulls. I wonder if the pulls, I think the pulls might be adding a bit to fatigue, but they're definitely helping technique. So that should come good, come back around uh, in that regard. And probably actually another useful topic to delay doing pulls for five more minutes is, I know people ask, and this comes up with athletes a lot, especially weight if there's, they're like, oh, training's gone shit. Is there any point in doing this competition or, uh, I didn't I didn't do the max out today because I just wasn't really feeling it but Sometimes you just have to do the fucking max out or do the heavy sets Even if you know it's not gonna go great. There's more benefit sometimes psychologically on training wise to doing them under duress and fatigue because one you don't want to back out of those battles all the time so in sessions like this you make prudent calls but once you've committed to that session a lot of times, even if you've been up all night with your baby and you've had a 12 hour shift and you were supposed to snatch heavy, sometimes there is benefits in weightlifting to still doing that sessions. And more often than not, there's benefit in doing those sessions than there is in doing them. Now, if your max is 100 and you hit 80, but you still had a good session at 80, a lot of times they are benefits. Weightlifting is a very peculiar sport in that regard so if that was max strength training you know if you're supposed to do a heavy single and you knew you were going to do shit there's kind of no point doing that but when it comes to snatching clean and jerking oh a lot of times there's more benefit to it because if you give yourself those excuses you're like oh i, I uh oh that's right i didn't have my coffee at nine i had it at 10 today so i'm kind of a bit slower than usual you know if you start thinking like that where it's like program says today i always snatch on fridays i always do day four on fridays nothing really you know it's not the sessions problem if it's a multiple if it happens multiple times then it's a systems problem and you need to sort that out rather than once off so the taking that battle if it's a once off is good taking that battle if it's just how your life is set up and weightlifting can't be a priority is also good so there's a lot of benefits to that but ultimately we want to be training smart of course which is smart programming comes in and good coaching but you know still will happen so I'm gonna move on to pulls. We'll take a 130 and focus on that back position and a straight extension. And I need to get some hydration because we are sweating. Um, so yeah, I need to get some water. And Alex has intro workouts, which I haven't really done since I finished 300 because you know, just a little bit, not as, as I say, switched on for training sessions or I just didn't want to be, but I, uh, we're in a sauna here, which is great. So it's good for warming up. So. We want snatches, then we'll do our squats. And then one thing I have changed just while we're talking about it is because the weather's nice lately and it's it's bright, it gets brighter really late in Ireland now. So uh, I instead of doing every session 20 minutes on the bike, I go for a walk now, probably 25, 30 minutes, a little bit longer to walk. Try and keep the pace up as heart rate raised. Eh, it's like, you know, it's marginal difference between the bike and the walk and it's better for just life being out in sunlight and nature and I definitely get better quality sleep after those walks when I do them in the evening uh, so it's a multi-factorial thing and it's not going to be the make or break reason why I don't have abs in three months time but uh, that's what I like to do now if it, if it was higher intensity stuff I'd have to change it but between walking and bike, stationary biking here I'm walking outside in nice weather I'm going to walk outside in nice weather anyway going to get the bulls
so inevitably their demands are never going to end. They'll literally never be happy because there's always going to be some other thing, some other piece of problematic lore, some other rule or exclusionary detail. This funny spectrum is Tyrion's creature too, since he recalled something. And Father's poor body was in his care from dark till dawn. Her uncle arrived promptly at sunset, where he was in dawn. Okay, so we are here at the mountain. We're doing some hill sprints. So tonight was supposed to be Jiu Jitsu, but Jiu Jitsu was cancelled. And we're doing some hill sprints tonight instead to get some conditioning in and to keep sprinting up. I still haven't found a good place to do some flat sprints in terms of just on something that's not grass. Uh, I could be doing them in grass, but ideally it would be a bit more of a better sprinting surface. So we are at the mountain it's usually pretty quiet around this time of night especially on a monday and as i said exceptionally good weather in ireland at the moment so we'll do some and i'll try and get some videos although uh, i won't lie i don't want to be that douche videoing stuff so I'll just make sure i'm in a, a good spot although there's only two other cars here so i should be okay uh i don't like uh i don't, I don't like yeah it's not like invading other people's privacy because I wouldn't obviously have them in the video, but it's kind of like mm, not a social faux pas. What's the word for it? it? Yeah, it kind of is a social setting. Like there's the time and place for some things, and people come to the mountain. This particular mountain, it's a fairly popular walking spot. You know, they're here to get away, walk in private, and. You don't want to make it a spot where people are videoing stuff so i want to make sure that i am not that douche and i don't want to um you know want to have respect for people and think about other people it's it's definitely important to have i think in the culture and it could be better in irish culture sometimes to be honest uh it was something really interesting when we were in tokyo that kind of thing that we were talking about a lot from Zach and Clarence and Dara and I were, were all discussing that. So it was interesting that different levels. Now, that's not to say Irish people are nice, but when it comes to culture and your impact on other people, it's not always thought of, but then people are very, very nice in other circumstances. So it's not a, I'm not condemning everyone and I'm probably very guilty of it. And there's a lot of reasons for that, historic reasons, which we do not have time to go into. So let's go sprinting. I left it pretty late just so it'll be quiet and we'll probably do something like 10 sets and then we'll work from there so we'll see where we'll find a good spot and then go from there
so if you come at the right times there's no nobody to disturb the the deer and you can hear the deer so it's a deer in this part of the country great deer country and they love this kind of forestry but you can hear a big crash every so often i've never seen them here but i've i've heard them very very frequently we just hear a thump and then a, a crack and they're gone you sometimes you hear whistling your seeker whistling i'll put a little noise over there so you can hear what a seeker whistle sounds like so i'd love to see some I'd love to shoot here as well but i'm sure someone has bought the rights and uh just going for a little walk now after so sprint technique feels okay it's definitely a lot to improve on and i'll be honest with you since i haven't been able to do the track stuff since the track closed down i've just been doing a lot of hill sprints and on the hill sprints i do think about the technique but to be honest i'm thinking about it in a, an unproductive way because i'm basically in the session when i'm thinking about it at the moment i'm thinking a lot about my snatch technique it's just the main sporting thought going through my mind and then in Jiu Jitsu I'm playing lots of guard for anyone who cares and I'm whispering because I feel like I don't want to disturb nature and I yes when I get to the sessions it's too late we think about it then and I don't have enough objectivity on my own sprint technique to really have anything to focus on so I am picky and choosing now I'm not really worried but it is a trading vlog so I sh I'm updating you honestly that while I won't say it's something I'm too bothered about because I'm still getting lots of hill sprints in and I'm enjoying it I would like to improve on it but I haven't been putting the effort in in terms of the technical fixes so it's one thing I do need to work on and luckily I suppose my sprinting will get better I'm kind of hoping I'll see some deer because I've heard some and it is still a bit early for sea cat they're they're come out in the dark but sprint technique will get better i am um, i just need to get a session in with a coach i think in person would be preferable and get some things to work on but as i say it's not super high priority i'm just really enjoying sprinting for sprinting sake which is which is always nice so i will just doing some steady state walking now one of the reasons i like doing the hill sprints as well here it's like an eight ten minute drive away but i just really like being out in nature i love it especially in the summer when we do get a summer in ireland the nature is and um, we don't have huge areas of wilderness nothing super remote not like our Canadian friends or American or, or Nordic or maybe even our Russian buddies but we do have some lovely wilderness and the government have said that they're going to buy extra land and increase the national parks so I want to be very excited about that if I was ever a multi-millionaire I would just buy up as much land as I could and then rewild it and then just let people use it walk in it and I would walk in it too that would be the that would be my uh what did I call that the word is not there in my brain philanthropy philanthropic action would be buy up as much land as I possible that would make sense for rewilding and rewild it so and the subject of rewilding there is some people think you can just leave it and I've heard some people speculate in Ireland and I've heard quite a few people specific to Irish rewilding say that you could just leave it and leave a fallow field and it would rewild and you would see initially brush and then you would see native species but I don't know if that's the case everywhere so if you have this kind of forestry which is planted forestry it's very very acidic it's very hard to get the ground back into fertile conditions and um, some places in scotland they've actually ground up seashells to restore the ph of the soil to a desirable ph and the pines 
make it very acidic for some reason, so they're not native. Very lot of, very lot of, a lot of ash died back in Ireland, where the native species of the ash is dying from disease, and it's not good, and it's very, spreads a lot very easily apparently. So you can hear some more deer further up there. That's why I'm whispering, because I can't shoot them, but I just want to look at them. So that's what I would do. Anyway, you probably aren't too interested in rewilding Ireland on my training vlogs. But something I'm very interested in, and if you've ever listened to shit talks, myself and Dara are very, very interested. Who knows, maybe Seeker Strength will, will buy, buy some land and rewild it someday. Uh, the government have gotten a lot more strict with what you can plant. So basically you can only plant hardwoods. They take a lot longer to grow and harvest them. And obviously worldwide sources of timber are very lucrative at the moment. A couple of acres of this land is worth hundreds of thousands. So a lot of people invested decades ago in land that was supposed to be land that was supposed to be fringe land so you could only plant on land that was unfarmable or not used for farming it wasn't part of a national park and obviously the lines got very blurred and people were just planting not everywhere but pretty much everywhere people who would inherit land or didn't want to farm anymore would plant it and in some ways i don't Actually, in no ways do I blame people invest in Ireland. Capital gains tax is incredibly high. One of the reasons we have a housing issue is the landlords is being a landlord is a very viable option. Whereas if you invest, you pay up to 40% capital gains tax, but usually 33% on the profits you make. And if you're not a multi-millionaire with hands and fingers everywhere, you lose a lot of your profits, whereas Renting is a lot more lucrative and where I was going with that is now you have to plant hardwood species so they take a lot longer. I think the average harvest is like 20 years or so so it is a very long term investment but compared to other investments it's not crazy. But the, the evergreen faster growing stuff isn't quite half the time but it's not, not far off so people are being forced to plant the hardwoods, which is great. And I've seen a couple of them around the place and they do look a lot nicer. A little unnatural to see the, those rows of hardwoods, but it does look a lot better compared to this. Although I'm sure this looks pretty familiar to any Pacific Northwesterners or Canadians watching that kind of forestry, but it's not natural to Ireland. There's not a lot of natural forestry left in Europe, let alone in Ireland. I think Poland has the biggest primeval forest. I'd like to go there someday for sure. Croatia is a little bit. Is it Carnati? It was there before. Very, very nice. Anyway, I don't know if I've turned this into a travel rewilding vlog, but this is what happens when you watch Seeker Strength. Sometimes you're here for sprinting and then you're here for opinions on rewilding. There's another opinion among kind of a fringe group in Ireland is people talking about farming and how farming is bad for the land and they're mistaking it for really intensive factory farming, which Ireland isn't. Now, is there environmental issues with all farming? Absolutely, in the current nature of Irish farming has for sure some issues, but there was a study done last year in terms of our area cover isn't as bad as it makes made out to be. Now, one thing is obviously the ecological diversity, but that definitely, obviously, as I'm a fan of rewilding, I'm not 100% keeping everything the way it is and not changing anything, but it's not fair to farmers. Uh, someone has to grow the food, and there's very good arguments made for the number of calories per liter of oil when you look at meat and the amount of protein compared to, for example, wheat. Very, very interesting numbers. And I know people get their jimmies in a rustle when you talk about climate change, when you talk about food sustainability. And of course, shooting deer and eating them 
and goats is a lot more efficient than that end. I shot a few goats a few weeks ago with Fitz, so I'm gonna start eating them soon. So I like to give them like two months in the freezer. Some people say they like six months, and depending on the animal, it definitely does make a difference, but I wanna eat them and see. So I've got some back straps and some mints. So, no deer to show, but you saw some sprints. You saw a horse running through the mountain, and this has been a lovely chat. If anyone is involved in rewilding, let me know, or you've any involvement at all, I'd be interested to hear. Although, I would assume the catchment area is small. But, hope you enjoyed the training vlog. Some snatches, some sprints. And, yeah. Peace.